Hello, this is Mr. McGovern, and welcome back to the fourth video in the Simple Harmonic Motion series. So today we're going to look at pendulums, um, the calculation for a time period for a pendulum, and something called the small angle approximation. So a pendulum time period looks similar in form to the mass on a spring time period formula. We have capital T represents time period. Um, remember that's different than the variable time which is lowercase t. Time period is the time for one full cycle. So for a pendulum it's from say the left hand side there across to the right and back to the left. And it's equal to 2 pi times uh, the square root of L over G where L is the length of the pendulum and G is the acceleration due to gravity which on Earth is, is 9.8 meters per second squared. So if you go onto a different planet um, the same length pendulum will swing at a different speed, well, and will have a different time period. The small angle approximation um, is about forces and where pendulums have different size forces. So just as a reminder, in simple harmonic motion, the total force should always point back towards the equilibrium point. Now with a pendulum, when it swung a, a small amount of um, <clears throat> a small angle, like the one shown, we have the gravity on the mass at the end of it, which is uh, downwards, tension on the cord or the string, and when you put those together in a vector addition diagram, remember you add forces head to tail, you get something like this, and the difference between them, or from the start of the first one to the end of the last one is the total force, in this case I draw my total forces with double arrows, and it points down that way. So if I put that total force onto my diagram on the right here, can you see the black arrows just added? They point back towards that equilibrium point. So this does obey our definition of simple harmonic motion. The force is back towards the equilibrium point. However, if I extend my diagram and move my pendulum up to quite a large angle and draw the force diagram for that, I have force of gravity down, hasn't changed. The tension force is along the string, so it's changed angle, but it's also a lot smaller. The string's under less tension when it's up there because gravity's not pulling directly against it. And when you put those together in a vector addition diagram, head to tail, we get the following. And the total force goes from the start of the um, first force, which is my gravity, to the end of the last force, which is my tension. And we get a double headed arrow or a total force like that. When I put this on the diagram, so we can see where it actually applies, I'll put it in black here, you can see that that, even though it is pointing sort of diagonally down, it's not pointing exactly at the equilibrium point, which I've circled there. And so when we get to larger and larger angles with, with pendulums, the total force does not point to the equilibrium point. So it does not obey the simple harmonic motion definition. And so for that reason, we only deal with pendulums that are swinging with quite small angles, and we say less than 10, 10 degrees. And when it does that, it obeys the simple harmonic motion definition, approximately. And that, just to remind you, that simple harmonic motion definition is that the total force points towards the equilibrium, and that total force is proportional to the displacement from the equilibrium. So the further from the equilibrium you are, the bigger the total force. But as you get larger and larger angles, that... Um, that force moves more and more away from pointing towards the equilibrium point. So any pendulums you have um, to ask questions about this year should be less than 10 degrees, and occasionally an examiner might ask you, what approximations have you made with this pendulum? And you can just say, look, it's less than 20 degrees, this is the small angle approximation, and the reason is at larger angles, when you put the total forces, or put the forces on and find the total force, you find that it does not point towards the equilibrium point. Thank <laughs> you.